Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Go ahead and clap for the Lord. Amen. All right, and, and let's just, from your seats, let's shout hallelujah to send it around the world on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I love that. Amen. Clap for Jesus. All right, well, uh, look at your neighbor and say, get your Bible out. Amen. Wednesday night, that's what we do. We always get in the Word. That's all we got. Amen. Faith Academy. That's right. That's what we would call Wednesday nights, Faith Academy. Good, huh? I have to bring that back. Faith Academy. Well, praise the Lord. Um, well, I'm, I'm just going to preach this word. You know, as as we're uh, still in the earth, and our job is to profess the truth with boldness. That's what we're supposed to do. Because if you know the truth, you won't be deceived. But if you don't know the truth, you'll fall for anything. And so it's my job as your pastor and and as a proclaimer of the truth to anyone who would watch this, it's my responsibility to teach the truth, to let the truth be told. That way, people know what to stand on. Amen? And so tonight, I titled this message, uh, God Cannot Lie. God Cannot Lie. So let's go to Titus. Titus, we want to look at Titus chapter 1. And we'll just get into the word tonight. God's always got something that's going to help us. And even, you know, prepare us. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll hear, I mean, Paul is writing this out, but he says here, um, let me just read verse one. It just flows right in there. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness in hope of eternal life. Now, this is what I want us to focus on, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And I'm just giving you all bonus. We'll, we'll dig into this, too. That's going to be our text. But verse three says, but in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me um, according to the commandment of God, our Savior. And so he's manifested his word through preaching. And that's what we do. We preach the word. Amen. We preach and teach, but it's God's word. I'm not up here uh, preaching opinion or preaching, you know, the topic of the day. That's what we do, because this is God's way of getting his word into the earth. Amen. So now let's break down this, this verse two, which is where we get the title of this message. So he says, God that cannot lie. Okay. Now we use different versions of the Bible and stuff like that to give greater understanding. But I've always taught that you have to have your King James as your foundation. And then you can expand because some of the versions, you know, twist it up a little bit and you might be missing bits and pieces of the truth. Well, this is one example because some of the other verses says God does not lie. Well, how many know does not and cannot are different? Amen. Does not is, you know, you have a choice, but cannot it is not possible. And so I like the way it's stated very clearly here. It says, God cannot lie. So cannot means it's not possible for him to lie. I mean, have you ever thought about that? You say, wait, it's not possible for God to lie. Well, God is God. He can do anything. Yeah, but he can't lie. Well, it's not possible. It's not in his makeup. Amen. It's not in his makeup or his ability cannot, once again, means it's not possible for him to lie. Now, man, on the other hand, man, on the other hand, can lie if he chooses. So think about this. 
Man has the ability to tell the truth or what? Tell a lie. And it's up to him. Now, God has given man a free will. And so uh, people get themselves in trouble when they start putting their trust in man who has this free will and who can be selective. Y'all in here with me. You know, you, you know, there are some people, there's something called selective ignorance. So selective ignorance is you like to say, I don't know. Well, you only don't know because you're not looking into it. And so you're being selective. Well, I don't know. And so, well, no, you need to know. And then there's other people that have a uh, they can be honest. In some situations and dishonest in others. Can I get amen right there? Or they can even be partially honest, but then eh, turn it a little bit on the end. I mean, no, that's still a lie. I mean, if, if, it, if it's not truth, it's a lie. And so my point in mentioning this is think about our God. He cannot lie. It is impossible for him to lie. There is not a man or woman on the earth that can say that about themselves. Even if you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, tongue talking, demon stomping, you're doing all that. You could still lie if you want to. No, pastor, it's not possible. You can lie if you want to. Now, I'm not saying that you are a liar, but you can if you want to. But now this is where it it's, it's totally changes things because we say God cannot lie. So now if I'm a person that is looking for someone to trust. Y'all in here with me. If I'm looking for someone to trust, wouldn't I want to trust somebody who cannot lie? Not somebody who is more than likely going to tell the truth. More than likely ain't enough. I need a guarantee on this thing. And we can only get that guarantee through God. Once again, man can lie if he chooses, but God cannot. Everything about God is truth. I'm saying with people spend enough time to just learn about God. Everything about him is truth. You could search up and down and you're going to find that it's all true. Every, I mean, he's always coming through. He's trustworthy. He's dependable. Where man makes his mistake is they veer off from God. And then they start to lean to their own understanding. They start to put a little trust over here and you have misplaced trust. Amen. And that sets you up for disappointments. Now, I'm not saying that you don't ever trust people. But you got to always realize People can fail you. They have the ability to fail you. I'm not saying that they will, but they can. How many know God cannot? Y'all hearing me today. And see, so you don't set yourself up to be disappointed. If you would just put all your trust, look at your name and say, go ahead and put it all on God. See, I'm talking about, I, that's what I like to do in my life. I like to put it all on God. And that empowers me. See, I'm not worried about somebody trying to get over on me because I didn't put all my trust in God. And God cannot lie. It's not possible because everything about him is truth. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1, 20. Let's break this down because we don't need to have this misplaced trust. We need to know that our God is trustworthy and man, he deserves our trust. I mean, think about it. When you're raising kids or something like that, you tend to give them a little more uh, leeway, right? Or you, you give them some more privileges after they've proven themselves. You know what I mean? You, you don't just, come on, you just don't, well, most parents don't just give a 12-year-old the keys to the car and say, go ahead, you know, drive yourself. You kind of work your way into that thing, right? You kind of teach them how to drive and then, you know, when you're teaching them, you're kind of like, oh, you know, anybody. Else? 
You're trying to teach, you're like, oh, Lord. <laughs> you're putting some faith out there just to ride with them while you're teaching them. Amen. But then after a while, amen, you let them come and go. Because they have had to, you know, earn your trust. And you, you've kind of given that to them. Well, think about God. He don't even have to earn your trust. I mean, you can't even think of a time where God has failed you. Because he don't, he can't fail. It's not possible. Now, sometimes people lose patience and we want God to move faster. Come on, somebody. We think that it should have been done yesterday and God knows better than we do. And God knows that, oh, you wasn't, work, you wasn't ready for it yesterday. If I would have gave it to you yesterday, you'd have messed it all up. But he's always on time. His timing is perfect. It's just a matter of you trusting him. And so if we look at the word here, he says, for all the promises of God. Look at your name and say all. OK, so if God promised it, it's going to come to pass. Y'all, Really? If he promised it, it's going to come to pass. Not might, not possibly. No, it will. For all the promises of God in him. Now you have to be this in him is speaking of in Jesus. So you must give your life to Jesus and that connects you to the promises of God. For all the promises of God in him are yea, meaning yes, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. And so if I'm looking at this, if all of his promises are yes. OK, so I know I got to get in Jesus, right? Y'all in here with me? What does that mean? Give your life to the Lord. Without Jesus, you're not going to make it. Amen. There, that's, that's why we got to stand for truth, because uh, all roads don't lead to heaven. Amen. There's only one way, and it's through Jesus. Well, you give your life to Jesus, now you get connected to the promises. Well, you know what? Here's a major problem in the church. People give their lives to Jesus, but don't learn about the promises. Oh, come on, somebody. If he's a faithful God and all of his promises are yes and amen, but you don't know the promises. I mean, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you don't know that the promises are there, you don't benefit from them because you don't know how to lay hold of them. You don't even know they exist. That's why people make mistakes and and they live their lives in a way that is not what God says. They'll say something like, you know, uh, man's years are, are, are 70 years. Y'all heard that? Three score and 10. Hey Amen. You know what three score and 10 is? A score is 20. So you got 20 times three is 60. And and 10 makes you 70. And so people will go around here thinking that 70 years is their life expectancy. Well, they're operating in ignorance. So how many know many can perish? And so people start dropping off after 70. Well, that's not what the word says. The word says in Psalm 90 that this was for a disobedient people. And so Moses was speaking this out and it was for a disobedient people. And it was stated that, yeah, you might live to 70 and then you might have some grace come your way. I'm just paraphrasing to make it to 80. So that would say 80 years old is max. That's your maxed out life. Now, you might be OK with that if you're 25. Come on, somebody. If you're 25, you're like, that's yeah, fine, whatever, you know, <laughs> 80. Yeah, I'm good. Now you start coming up into your 70s and you start like, well, huh? Wait, what do you see? Now you want to dig for deeper truth, huh? Now you want to dig in there a little bit because you're coming close to 80. So you're like, well, man. And then some of y'all passed 80. So you're thinking, man. Any day now, you know what I mean? You just can't even sleep all the way through the night. You're just blinking. Am I still here? Am I still here? Well, we got to know the truth. Well, the truth is Genesis 6, 3, right? The years of a man are 120. Oh, wait, what? Well, that's the truth. And that's a promise. See, God even said, I'm not always going to strive with you guys, but the years of a man shall be 120. And so if I get that, I'm going, OK, well, man. Now, how many know Genesis comes came before Psalm 90? 
And so you can lay a hold of that promise, but there are always conditions to God's promises. His promises, well, as a matter of fact, let me rephrase that. His word is truth. You do what he says, you're going to be blessed. You don't do it, you will be cursed. And guess what? That's the truth. So guess what? God is not going to back off. See, that's why people, they, they are deceived into thinking that they can live a way that's displeasing to God and still be blessed. That is impossible because that means God would have to be a liar. He cannot bless disobedience and still be a God of all truth. And he cannot let obedience go unblessed. So if, if I get this, then I'm going to be excited about obe obedience because God has to bless me. Y'all in here with me. OK. And so for all the promises. So with this, I need to know what the promises are. His promises are revealed in his word. Now, I want to help you because I'm, boy, I'm telling you, I think there's a big problem going on in people's lives. See, we don't build our lives on em the empty promises of man. I mean, come on. We don't build our lives on this. Man is always saying something. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And we ought to be saying, OK, I ain't worried about you. I'm, I'm looking to God on this. Come on. It, how many? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And they, they do it, especially around uh, the, uh, the political times and when they're trying to get a vote and all that. Everybody got all these promises. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And God's people ought to be saying, well, I'm just going to trust God. Because he's been coming through for me all my life. So I'm going to stick with that. That's what we need to do. But we got to know the promises. So as, as I'm preaching this, how, if, if people live in ignorance, then they live outside of the promises, even though the promise was made. So now he's the God of his word. So if he promised you long life, but you keep speaking death and all that. Well, guess what? His word is true. And so death and life are in the power of your tongue. He gave that to you. And so you don't know any better. And so you keep speaking. Y'all in here with me. Hereditary diseases. And you know what I'm saying? All this runs in the family. What family? Amen. Everybody got high blood pressure in this family. Well, how about you be the first one that don't? Doesn't that sound better? Wouldn't it be better for you to say, I, I decided to reject that. Y'all all got it, but I don't. Amen. Why not? Now, what's the truth? The, I'm going to I'm going to show you the word. I'm going to give you the word on what he says. And, and the word is, is healing for us and all that. But we've got to grab this. So if, if I understand this as my final authority, then if I know that all of his promises are true, I'm definitely not going to build my life on the empty promises of man. I am going to build my life on the infallible word of God. Why don't you build your life on this? Do you know that there are people that are building their lives on this and living good lives? I think about it. See, because sometimes when I get to talking about old oh man, the years of a man are 120 and all that kind of stuff. And people, they're like, yeah, OK, that's good and all that, you know. Uh, but I'm not, you know. I'm only 51, so I'm not like one that can say this works because I'm this old. Well, man, I know Kenneth Copeland is preaching and he's 85, something like that. 85 years old preaching the gospel. But I, I'm talking about he's not just uh, coming out and know, like, you know, because some some pastors, man, they got to sit down when they preach. Amen. I ain't mad at them, but that's what they got to do. They get out there and they come out there. They can still preach, but they need to sit down. Ken the Copeland man is walking, preaching, walking. He don't even stay up here. He be walking all over the place, just preaching. Full of energy. Traveling around the world. 85. Well, what do you think is the difference? Why is there somebody that's 85 like that preaching the gospel around the world? Healthy. Don't not, you know, bogged down with medications and all that. Well, what's the difference? He's been in this for a long time. He, he, he decided that God's word is the truth and that's what I'm going to read. That's what I'm going to build my life on. Now, you can't argue that. You can't argue the fact that, OK, this man is 85 years old and he got a spring in his step. So how did he get there? 
right here. That's how he got there, right here. And so wouldn't, wouldn't you be one that says, well, man, let me find out what these promises are about. Because everybody is going to tell you stuff. They want you to build expectations based on their experience. Amen. That's why stuff comes out. That's why they got commercials, right? If, if you know, certain age, they know the studies, a certain age group of people watch this type of show at this hour. So what happens? The commercials are pushed to target that age group because they want to clump you in with everybody. You know what I'm saying? It, it, this stuff is crazy, man. You, that's why you can't build it on that. You can't build your life on that because your expectations will change. Your, your certain age groups, man, they flooding that TV program with medication commercials, all this medication commercials. And, and then, you know, my, me and my wife, we picked up on how they, uh, when they start showing the, the side effects, they lower the voice. I was like, wait, wait, hold on. You, they start talking all these side effects and they lower that thing real, real low. You can't hear it. You're just hearing all the music and the bright colors and you're just being taken in and you don't even know what this is about. Amen. But if we would just be a people that would not be hypnotized by the devil. Y'all in here with me. Don't be hypnotized by the devil. You know, the devil's so crafty that he will cook up some poison and have it smell good and have it look good. And he'll tell it to you. He said, now uh, this is going to kill you, but you won't hear that because you smelled this good smell. You, you didn't hear him. He just told you, it's, I'm going to kill you with this. And you just ignore that part and you just go right in there and you let him give you the poison and you take it. And we have to be those that are encouraging people get in this. This is going to help you not hurt you. If you build your life on this, it won't matter what anybody says about you because your life is founded upon the rock. Amen. And so we want to build our lives on the infallible word of God. Let's go to Psalm 119, 160. And you just got to know this. And if you can convince yourself of it, we preach it all the time, but we're going to keep preaching it. Thy word is true from the beginning. Oh, so in the beginning, thy word is true from the beginning. So the first word written in this book is true. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How many know that's true? So from the beginning, the word is true. Now, what I did, because I was a little more stubborn of a person, I guess, my personality type, I didn't like people telling me stuff I want to find out for myself. And so when I got saved, I prayed a prayer and I said, Lord, if this is real and this Bible is real and all this, you're going to have to break it down to me. And so I did. And I took the King James Bible because I had kind of gotten, well, I said the sinner's prayer. I wasn't really saved when I was 15. My sister had me say this prayer and I was, she said, you want to go to heaven? I said, yeah. So I said this prayer, but my heart wasn't in it. But she gave me a Bible and I kept that Bible. And she told me way back then, always use the King James Bible. For me, I didn't know, no, I didn't know nothing. King James, who is he? I didn't know anything about anything. But for some reason, I kept that Bible. So when it came time for me to get saved for real, and I knew what I was doing and gave my heart to Jesus, I went to that Bible. And I read it. So like he says, thy word is true from the beginning. I started at the beginning. I started at Genesis. And then I just read it all. And it was like a study. I was just reading, highlighting. And you would think, like, how is this person reading the King James? Well, it was God. God put an anointing on me to learn his word. And so now I was able to build my life on the truth because I read it for myself. And then now... God, through the Holy Spirit, began to connect me with the promises. 
And so if you get connected with the promises, now you won't stray away from them. Thy word is true from the beginning. Every one of thy righteous judgments endures forever. And so you'll see, I want you to see something here as we're teaching through this. Thy word is true from when? The beginning. Then he says, every one of thy righteous judgments endures forever. And so it's true from the beginning and it's going to endure forever. Y'all with me? And so what I can understand here is that it's never going away. Isaiah 40, verse 8, you can just write that down. We go over it all the time. But it's the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And so I'm saying, man, this is great because if I can build my life on this. And you know what's so awesome? We have all this technology. Things have changed. But you know what? The sa this same Bible that I'm, I'm studying right now and, and helping you all with. This Bible was working for Kenneth Copeland when he was a young person. In his 30s, the same scriptures. Now he's in his 80s and it's the same Bible. Not a, oh, because, you know, well, we didn't have cell phones. It doesn't matter. You had this book. It's all about people taking out the time to dig into it and allow this to shape your life. Now, I want to tell you something here because it's very important. I mean, we're in adult class, if you want to call it that. But. It's our responsibility to learn and to live by his word. Luke's your name says your responsibility. OK, look at him and say, if you don't know the word, it's your fault. I'm serious. We, we you know, we live in a world, man, where we're always looking for somebody to blame. It's somebody else's fault. We're looking for somebody to blame. It's, it's, it's their fault. You know, we're looking for excuses to hide behind. Well, you know what? It's because I'm black or it's because I'm purple. It's because I'm whatever. That's why. No. Get the promises. The promises are not uh, color, you know, specific or gender specific. It doesn't matter. The promises are just a promise. You just got to do what God said to get in the promises. Amen. This is going to work for all people. But if you're a person that's looking for excuses, and that's why you got to be careful, man. You get to go into that doctor and all that stuff. First thing they ask you, well, does this run in your family? They want to label you. They want to classify you. As soon as you tell them, well, you know, my daddy and my grandpa and you, you're going to get it too. Huh? What? what? And they'll just throw it out there. Oh, you're going to get it. Then if they tell you to take some medication and you don't want to take it, they'll get upset. Some doctors will get irate with you. They almost call you fool. <laughs> they might not say that, but they coming close to it. Amen. But you've got to be one that is so convinced of this truth that now I'm not telling you don't take medication. This is not about that. This is about look. I'm going to build my life on this. This is what I have to go by. And I want to know what it says. And it's my responsibility to learn it. You know, this is something that I didn't know, man. I, I, I was even saved and I didn't know that like I had power in Christ. I just was saved and I was just like thinking, you know, I'm going to get to heaven one day. But I didn't know I had power over the devil. I didn't even know I could rebuke the devil. Did, are you y'all in here with me? I didn't know nothing about no binding and loosening like it says in Matthew 16. I didn't know I could do all that. Well, I was uneducated. So as a result, I wasn't gaining victory in some areas. And so it's up to me to learn this. And this is what God impressed upon me. I have to know it because if I know the truth for myself, then I won't fall for a lie. And that's what I'm encouraging you all. Anybody who who listens to me, I want you to get in this thing. I want you to learn it for yourself so that you can make informed decisions, informed decisions based on this. And so, 2 Timothy, let's look over there now. 2 Timothy 2.15. So the word here says study. Now, how many of you have done any studying in your life before? Any kind of studying. Imagine this. Now, I'm not expecting everyone, you know, 
to, to be a pastor and all this, but I, you know, I can share this as just my own personal testimony. I got a hold of scriptures like this, and I took the word study literally. Amen? I, I took it literally. And so I began to study the word. I began to read it. And now this is before I became a pastor. See, this is, I believe that this was the building blocks uh, that God was laying down for me to become Pastor Troy. And I didn't know this, but I took this word and I would study it. So he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly, look your name, say rightly, Rightly dividing the word of truth. Why is that there? Rightly dividing the word of truth. This is there because the devil will come along and throw some scripture out and try to twist you up. We know this is true because he did it in Matthew 4 when he was tempting Jesus. He threw out scripture and tried to trick Jesus with the word. Well, in my life, I experienced that. Every good lie has to have a little bit of the truth in it for it to be believable. So that's why the Mormons, amen, have a little bit of truth in there. Right. They'll come to your door and they'll come out there with that, that Bible and they'll run some scriptures. They're trained to run through certain scriptures. And if you don't study to show yourself approved, then you, they'll have you going down some road and you're like, well, wow, that is in the Bible. Well, it does say that. And they'll lead you into some mess. And that's a cult. And you ain't going to meet Jesus when you die. You're going to be upset, man. I've been shafted. Because, <laughs> you know, they don't tell you. All, you know what I'm saying? Like, a, it would be if a cult just flat out came out and told you some crazy stuff uh, just from Jump Street. Everybody would be like, man, you better get out of here. You crazy. I ain't messing with you. You know what I'm saying? If, if the, the Mormons came up to you and said, hey, you know, we have rituals. We have rituals where we go to the temple and we pray for the dead. You'd be like, get out of here with that, man. You must be crazy. Even if you're not saved, you wouldn't fall for some old stuff like that. Amen. I mean, even when I wasn't saved, I remember my friend, he was a Jehovah Witness. Well, he wasn't practicing nothing. We weren't practicing no religion, and you know, for us. But his parents were Jehovah Witness or whatever. That was his family thing. And so they have this thing where they try to come over to your house and they want to teach you something. And he would say, you know, you only have such and such. I said, I don't care. Whatever. We'll listen. But then one time they said something about there's no hell or something. Now, I wasn't saved, but I knew. I was like, uh... I think there is a hell. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know I ain't saved, but I think there's a hell or something. And I told my sister, I said, yeah, I was talking to these people. And they said, ain't, there's no hell. And I was kind of like, is this real? I mean, like, what is this? And she immediately, get away from those people. That's a, that's a cult. That's a lie. And, you know, truth, the truth is that they were deceiving then they come with some old stuff like there's 144,000 people that's going to make it in and all this stuff. Now, if you don't study what the Bible says, they'll still try to use it against you. Amen. Y'all, you understand how important it is to, to know what the truth says, because if you don't know for yourself, you will fall for all kind of craziness. I mean, there's even. A doctrine out there where they they will preach that if you're not baptized, you're not saved. And they teach out of the NIV, which we use that sometimes. But you, that's why I say you got to be grounded on this King James so you don't be, de be deceived. But they'll teach out of uh, Acts chapter eight and verse thirty six. You know, it's, it's uh, Philip and the eunuch. And then he says, the eunuch says, well, there's some water. What stops me from being baptized? And then verse 37 says that you must believe in the Lord Jesus. So that's key, right? I mean, oh, you got to believe. You can't just get baptized and think that's it. You got to believe first. You shouldn't even be getting baptized if you don't believe. Amen. 
And so they try to argue that if you don't get baptized, you're not saved. Well, what saves you is your heart. You give your life to Jesus. So you confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, Romans chapter 8, then you're going to be saved. That's where salvation comes. Now, baptism is an outward expression of what took place in your heart. Well, my point in saying this is I had these encounters. This person tried to come up to me, man, and tell me this stuff. I said, well, wait a minute. Let's, I said, well, what happened to verse 37? He wasn't ready for that. Now, who in their right mind? Everybody knows how to count. If you're going over some verses, you said verse 36, Verse 38. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I think we skipped the verse. Oh, no, don't worry about that. And then, no, no, man. What is that 37? Well, that's the verse that says that you must believe in Jesus. Don't you think that's a key verse? Well, didn't I tell you that every good lie has to have a little bit of the truth in it for it to be believable. Now, whose responsibility is it to find out that there was a verse 37? Yours. Yours. Don't be getting mad at those people. They just doing what they do, but it's up to you. And that's why I like teaching the Bible and encouraging you all to get into it so that you know what it says. See, I've had different people, man. You, you know, some people don't believe in like, um, they don't believe in prosperity. They don't believe in healing, right? They don't believe that, you know, you can claim healing and all that. Well, if you get all the word on it, now you come up, you decide what you're going to believe. You decide it and don't just listen to someone else. So it's your responsibility. Now, uh, I want to encourage you to press in so that now you can learn and live by the word. Look at your name and say, learn and live. That's what we're supposed to do. Learn and live. Now, we need to put the word into our hearts. So if you do that, if you put the word into your heart, um, it'll keep you. Amen. I mean, no, the word will keep you. And also it'll bring you into God's best for your life. The word, if you put it in your heart, it'll bring you into God's best for your life. Go to Proverbs now. Proverbs 4. 20 and 22. I'm going to, I'm going to show you here the translations. Uh, when you study some of these words, it talks about the word as a medicine. And so he says, verse 20, this is an NLT. My child, pay attention to what I say. Don't you think that's pretty serious when God says that? Yeah. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully, what? To my words. You know that God will speak to you through his word. Y'all in here with me? I've often said that you read the word, the word will start reading you. He'll tell you, the word will tell you what's in your heart. And the Holy Spirit will correct you. He'll take you to scriptures and he'll cause you to navigate. And then he'll have you living off of this word. And so... Put the word into your heart and it will keep you and bring you into God's best. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them. And look at this. And healing was this talking about. To their whole body. So let me help you with some uh, practical application. You can, come on, give yourself a prescription. Anybody in here with me? Uh, you got an ailment. Come on, somebody. You got an ailment. You got something you're dealing with. Man, if you can tap into the power of the truth, you can prescribe yourself a daily dose. Come on, somebody. You can... Oh, you know what, man? I think I'm going to need to take this one three times a day. Come on. But where people miss it is they lack the discipline or maybe they don't believe it's true. So if he says in Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes, I'm healed. Is that true or not? Well, wait a minute. I don't feel healed. Well, take some medicine. Here it is. Thy word. 
for it's going to bring life to those who find them and healing to their what? So can you put the word on anything? I mean, what does whole body mean to you guys? Whole body? I'm talking about, so what should our expectations be? You know, I didn't have people get mad at me for preaching that they can be healed. I said, wow. That is some, that is high level deception. Amen. I didn't get mad at me because I said you can be healed. Well, I'm not yet, yet now. Well, what you, I mean, then I'd be the mean one if I just said, stay sick then. I'd be, then I'd be, then I'd be doubly bad. He just told me to stay sick. That's because I prayed over you and you didn't receive it. Then you got mad at me because I said you can be healed. Now, this is not to condemn anybody. This is not to say, OK, if you're not healed, something's wrong with you. Listen, you should be striving to get these promises to manifest in your life. If that's what it says. Why should we have all these people going around here talking about I'm old at 60? Like why? When did that become normal? Obviously, it becomes normal when people aren't in here. They ain't reading this. So that's why you going around talking about are you old when you hit 50? Because your expectations are set based on the world. Amen. But I say if we build it on the word, build it on the word, then you ought to be like, I'm just barely 50. I'm man, I'm a young. You know what I'm saying? I, I thank God, you know, I, I don't. Me and my wife, we don't speak like this. We learn this stuff. And this brought transformation into our lives. We just don't say stuff because we understand that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we don't speak. It doesn't mean that you don't feel something. It doesn't mean that you, you know, don't feel an ache or whatever. You just don't glorify that stuff because that's not your truth. So I've got to stand on this. But if I don't, then I'll fall into the category with everyone else. Everyone else, man. I know a lot of people my age struggling. I'm thinking, dang. Struggling. Now. That once again, it's your expectations. See, if a person is struggling at 50. Man. It's going to be a long road. Or short. You know what I mean? But if we build it on the truth, then we're going to say, no, no, no. That ain't, that's not, that's not me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go jogging. They're having fun, huh? I'm going to go jogging. I'll do whatever I need to do. Go do some working out or something like that. You just have expectations, but you can only get there if you build it on the word. So if you take this word and you put it in your heart, then now you said that the word is going to bring healing to their whole body. So once again, this is Wednesday night, practical application. If you got an ailment, what are you supposed to be putting on it? How does this work? You man, address that thing. If your man, your foot is hurting. In the name of Jesus, I command you, be made whole. According to Isaiah 53, 5, I'm already healed. Be made whole. Right now, I command this pain to leave me now. In the name of Jesus. Well, who gives you the authority to say that? The book. He says it. Behold, I, I told you guys Sunday, behold, I give you power over all the works of the devil. Luke 10, 19. You got it. It's right there. You can uh, decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Job twenty two twenty eight. Come on, somebody. You can do this. Now, if you don't do it, then now you have to be settled. You just got to settle for what you got. You know, whatever your situation in life is, if, if you just got to stay there. But if you, how many know there's more? And I want us to live according to this. See, if we if we really live this, if we really uh, built our lives on the truth and understood that God could not lie. Do you know that yeah, Psalm 91 is the truth, man? 
if you if you really believe that's the truth and you profess that, then now you will not be afraid of nothing. Y'all, y'all in here with me? You would not be afraid of anything if we believe this. It seems like we would, as pastors, we'd be talking this on, on the, uh, all of our sermons. Oh, don't worry about it. We, we got Psalm 91. We're good. We wouldn't be all afraid because of some disease that's out there. Oh, it's out there, but it can't touch me. Why? Because that's what the truth says. And so I don't have, man, I don't have a revelation of getting sick. Oh, come on. I don't have a revelation of that. Then you start talking about, I can't get sick. See, now I'm going out there. Well, what if you do? Well, what if I don't? Amen? I ain't sitting up every day waiting, on, waiting to get sick. I'm waiting to feel better. I'm waiting to feel better. You know what I mean? And so me and my wife, like I was saying, we don't speak all this stuff. We thank God for what we do have. But I'm expecting even to get better. I thank God for the strength that I have today, but I'm expecting to get better. I'm not making these excuses about not, you know, everything's going wrong. And that's not that can't be your confession unless it's true. Now, here's the thing. People can turn a lie into their truth. I'm getting ready to close in a minute, but people can take a lie and that lie can become their truth. And now that's. Perception is reality. Amen. You could think that, you know, people have thought themselves sick. Can you believe it? Oh, I think I caught something. You didn't catch nothing. But you about to prophesy something on you. You say you feel a little something in your throat. You don't know. That's just a symptom, a fiery dart. You cast it out. This ain't get off me. This don't belong here. Or you can say, hmm, must have been when I went to the gym. Oh, well, some of y'all don't go to the gym, so. <laughs> must have been when I went to the store. Must have been that grocery cart. I think something got on me. Yeah, I, you know what? I did see that child with that runny nose. Keep on talking about it. It's going to manifest. Because now, that was actually... Not even true. You don't ain't nothing get on you. But now you can make that into your truth. You keep thinking about it. Come on, Proverbs 23, 7. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. So you want to keep thinking about that? You keep thinking, oh, man, I feel like I'm OK. It's coming your way. Now, if we preach this, this is the truth now. You've got to be dogmatic in this thing to where you've got to say, I'm not accepting anything else. Now, what if, what if it doesn't change? Well, what's true, the Bible or your symptom? Now, I might be going out there, but don't worry about it. It's going to be it's going to be better for you in the long run. So if you got a symptom, what's true, the symptom or the book? So you got to decide that you got to say, OK, the book is the truth. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my medicine. I'm going to medicate this thing out of me. And I'm going to just keep taking a daily dose, taking it. OK, oh, three times a day. Well, you know what? It ain't moving. I need five times a day. Come on, let me take it again. OK, I'm going you, know, you see what I'm saying? Because how I many know people will go to a doctor and try multiple medications? <laughs> Let's try multiple. OK, well, this ain't working. Let me try this one. That's what they are doing, practicing medicine. <laughs> Amen. It's a practice. Ooh, that worked. Oh, sorry, didn't work on you. My bad. But I'm just practicing. This ain't practice. This is truth. So you can get this and you can put it on it. Okay. I didn't. Okay, Lord. I don't feel no better, but I'm going to put it on there again because I know you cannot lie. I was just at church on Wednesday and you said you cannot lie. So I'm expecting right now for this to manifest for me. Now, if there's something that I need to change, there's something I'm doing to harm myself. Let me know about that. Okay, see, now I got to close in a minute, but this is the other side of it. 
See, there's the truth, but then God will show you how to apply the truth. I mean, applying the truth is like following instructions. You know, you can try to build something, but you need to read the directions, right? Sometimes people take shortcuts and they don't read the directions and then it turns out wrong. Amen. Now. Whose fault is that? You got to follow the program. If God says do this and you say by stripes, I'm healed. And then God start talking to you. So you sure are. But you're going to have to let go of them donuts. <laughs> wait, 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 huh? Wait, what? I don't. Wait, by, by his stripes, I'm healed. I'm just, you know, praise the Lord. Then the Holy Spirit will let you know. You cut, cut back on that. Amen? Let go of that spam. <laughs> it ain't doing you no good. Wait, by his stripes, I'm, I claim healing over this gas. <laughs> I rebuke you, gas. <laughs> but you, you get, then you get like a, rev, a, a, a revelation from heaven. You say, man, you don't have to change up some of that stuff you're eating. Y- y'all in here with me. I mean, I'm just trying to give you a practical application because I can apply the word and then now light will come. The light will come to my path and then God will educate me. He'll let me know. I mean, this is how it even works in working out. I believe I've always told people your body is your best trainer. Listen to your body. Your body going to tell you if, if you like it or not. Somebody says, do this. I've had plenty of people come up and say, do this. And I'll do it. And I'll say, no, my body don't like that. So I ain't going to be able to do that. Oh, no, I've been doing this for years. Keep doing it. I'm doing something else. Because I'm going to listen to what my body is telling me. Y'all in here with me. And so don't allow, you know, yourself to be deceived by not committing to the truth. But then now as you commit to the truth, listen to the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. I want I want my youth renewed. I want all this stuff. Man, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. I'm telling you, this thing is so powerful, man. The Holy Ghost is the best teacher. He'll tell you everything you need to know. He'll just talk to you. He'll just speak to you just just like that. And he'll just give you directions and he'll say, do this. Amen. Seriously, I mean, you know, I'm going to close here. I know I said that, but, you know, whenever I say I'm going to close and I'm just stalling. (laughs) No. But listen, I've learned that I can trust God. I can pray about everything. And he tells me. And then now you have to get a scripture, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, pray, but then now listen to the instructions. He's going to tell you exactly what to do. And you'll get the results that you want. You, you come into a situation where you don't know what you're doing. Pray about it. Then listen. And God will tell you what to do. Amen. And so. If we put his we pay attention to what God says and we trust him. And we know that his word is what we're going to stand on and we're going to align our lives with the word. We're going to make sure we stay intact with the word. Then we can expect the results of the word. Let's close over here. Numbers 23, 19. You guys know this, but you should. Understand this and let's leave out here with this in our minds. Only truth comes from God. He's not going to tell me anything wrong. I need to learn about what he has already spoken in his in his word. God is not a man that he should lie. Didn't we say that earlier? Man can lie if he chooses. But guess what? God is not a man. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. And so he's not going to change his mind. He's not going back and forth. I don't know what to do. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make good? So you would ask yourself that. Is God going to come through or not? Does he come through or does he hold back? He's always going to come through. And you can always trust God. You can always know that his plan is going to be the best plan for you. Now, I believe if we would do this, I'm not saying that we would be uh, oblivious, you know, to where we don't know what's going on. But 
you don't have to be moved by what's going on. Amen? Because you're trusting the word. And so things could be going on around you, but it does not have to affect you. Because you're not putting trust in all those things or you're not worried about all those things. You're in this. And if you can get this and get it in your heart, no matter what comes up, you're not going to have fear. Why? Because why not? Why won't you have fear? Huh? God can't lie, but come on, give me a scripture. It's word of life. How come you won't have, say it again? Okay, see, so I can say, I will never fear anything. How can, how can you say that? Well, his word is true and God don't lie. He said, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God's not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power, loving of a sound mind. So I'm not afraid. I can't be afraid. It's not possible. Oh, man. And all this stuff has been here before 2020 came. And it's going to be here when 2020 leaves. And if some of y'all grab this, you'll get blessed up real good before the end of this year. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Let's close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for your word that we can stand on it. We thank you, Lord, that your truth does not change. But if we would commit to it, then now situations in our lives would change because your word would prevail. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, if you're watching us and you don't know Jesus as Lord, we want to encourage you to invite him into your heart. Do so and your life will be better. It's going to change. God's going to do all this wonderful work in you. So church, let's all repeat this prayer. And if you're at home, repeat it. Join in with us. And let's say this. Let's say it with confidence so that anyone who would hear this message would know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please. And fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, let's stand to our feet. We'll get ready to step out into victory. And I know that God's got something good in store for you. We can expect to finish out this week strong. Amen. How many of y'all know that goodness is coming your way? You're going to stay with God and you're going to expect what God would bring. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those that have come out. Thank you for those that have tuned in. Now I'm asking God that you release a blessing. I'm asking that you release a blessing and that you would saturate us with your power. Release that anointing upon our lives and that we'd walk in this greater victory that you have given us. We thank you and we praise you now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord.